Ladies and gentlemen, here's somebody without a thing going on in her brain today, according to her. Oh, this thanks is, for telling th everybody. This is Ronnie <laughs> Bennett, ladies and gentlemen. No relation any longer. Uh, what? Huh? Are you a relation? Would I consider you a relation? Well, I don't know. I mean, I suppose it's the definition of relation. We were once married and now we're not. So then when we were married, you were related to me. Well, uh, do you mean biologically? No, no never no, were. No, 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 no. But you were related to me because by marriage. Yes. Okay. The then when we got divorced, you were no longer related to me. I guess I can assume, right? You could turn that around, too. I'm trying to uh, say that so that you understand why her name is Bennett and my name is Bennett. The only thing is she legally changed her name to Bennett, and I'm still Schwarzman. Because everybody, after you and I broke up, because yeah. of the radio show, mm -hmm. everybody thought my last name was Bennett, and I got sick to death of it, so I just said, screw it, I'll keep it. Hold, hold on a second. I, uh, did you hear this? I, I got a call on my phone. Hold on a second. Let me just oh, turn. We need on. to start over. Okay. No, we don't need to start over. No, that's all right. No. We can do that. This is. These are the things that happen in life. I thought I turned everything off. Okay. The one thing I didn't I did turn too. off See was this Picacto watch. And then, <laughs> and then it was somebody saying, "You, you know, you just qualified for." What I love is when they call me up and say, uh, "You know, we can lower your car insurance." And I go, "I haven't got a car." You know, I never had a car. You know what just happened years. to me? What? I got my new bill for Comcast, which is our one and only provider of internet and television that doesn't involve an antenna on your roof, you know. Um, they just raised my monthly charge, and I had the most basic that you can get of television. Mm -hmm. They just raised it more than 10%. Really? Again, they did it last year, you too. You know, they do that without even questioning. I don't think they even have again? to... What did you just say? Without even questioning it. I don't think they even have to answer to anybody. No, they, they don't. Yeah. Yeah. No, they don't. I'm, but two years in a row for a total of 20%, mm -hmm. nothing has changed. Um, I take the most basic television. There's uh, I have maybe 35 channels, if you don't count... The 47 sports channels they plug in there. Mm -hmm. that I never have looked at in my life. And uh, and so now I'm up to more than 120 a month for internet and basic cable. Wow. It doesn't seem right. Well, mine's, uh, mine's at 265, but I've yeah, got everything. Well, I've got everything because Marjorie <laughs> has to have everything she's got to have her netflix she's got to have her hulu she's got well i have to as well okay i'll admit that <laughs> don't uh, blame it on your but, wife but, that's but, not nice but, it, it, but no well, she was she has to have a lot of stuff that i could live without oh by the way that 120 is not counting netflix i've over the holidays i found a cheap hulu fare two dollars a month for a year for what so, uh, for hulu for hulu wow yeah yeah, and I wanted <laughs> what I'm paying is twenty four dollars to be able to see The Handmaid's Tale. That's the only thing I really well, want. Well, I have, I have, I pay eleven dollars a month to Hulu. Now you're going to say, what are you paying eleven dollars a month to Hulu for? And I shall answer that question. I buy their commercial free service, so I don't have to watch commercials during a show. Oh, I just tape everything, and then I can just click a button that skips the commercials. Yes, you can do that, but I I'm lazy. I'm lie. lazy. What can I say? Hey, did you watch the super-duper big deal, biggest of all time um, Jeopardy thing? No. Did they have one last night? No. No. It, well, it was two, two nights last week and last night. No, it was three nights last week. Well, whatever number, and then it, well, the last one was last night. I mean, mon what is today? Wednesday? Yeah, Tuesday night. Tuesday. Oh, Tuesday night they ran one. Uh, really? Yep. I kept looking for it, and I couldn't find it. Well, it was right there, 8 p.m. Really? Are you sure it's the... How, how far uh, did somebody finally win it? Yes. Oh, really? So Ken Jennings won it? Yes. Oh. Yes. Son of a bitch. I, yeah. want, I wanted the gambler from Vegas to win it. Oh, I, I couldn't stand him. 
really? <laughs> but I got to tell you something. Years and years and years ago, a woman I worked with got on Jeopardy. And mm -hmm. she was forever reading, you know, those great big books they used to publish with everything that's known to the world in them every year. Yeah. And she was just reading those all the time like crazy and she made notes of certain things in newspapers and magazines and all that and she um tried out this was when i lived in new york she tried out for the show when they announced we're interviewing new york people mm -hmm. and they took her this really? was way back in the 1990s early 1990s and uh and so she was on the show and she won I think she was on two programs before someone else beat her, and she won thirty-five thousand and change, wow. or somewhere around there. Wow! And so I was sending her a note this morning about, did you watch the Super Duper Jeopardy? And it occurred to me that Jeopardy, for God knows how many years, you know, thirty-five, forty years, it's been going on. Mm -hmm. That Jeopardy has a standard thing that it does every day. They do it exactly the same way every day. Somebody wins, somebody loses. You can't make up facts on that show. Nobody gets into fist fights. Nothing untoward ever happens. And yet it's still compelling. Wouldn't it be nice if our life was like that these days? Yes, if it were as easy as Jeopardy. Yeah. <laughs> yes. It's a very civil... It, it, it's it, the one little place of sanity in public life. Well, more than that, civility. Yes. Civility, yeah. Yes. Yes. You say sanity, but I also add civility to that. It's a very... No, no, no. But I meant overall, it's this, given the the insane governmental yeah, right. political world we live in and geopolitical world, Yeah. it's this one little corner there that has certain rules, they follow the rules, and it works every and, day. And, and it's not a stupid-ass game show either. You know, what always amazed me, the two shows that were created by the same person followed each other. It's Jeopardy, the smartest show on television, without question, mm -hmm. followed by uh, uh, a Wheel of Fortune, the stupidest game show on television. <laughs> you don't have to have I a brain read. in your head to play uh, Wheel of Fortune. I didn't read the story, but I saw a headline somewhere in the last week that whoever, whatever the name of the guy is who's the host of Wheel of Fortune. I haven't seen it in Pat years. Pat Sajak. Pat Sajak. His yeah. daughter is playing the letter turner. I think maybe she was doing it when Vanna White was hosting it because he had had a uh, medical problem. Oh, is that what happened? Yeah. I didn't. I had no yeah. idea. Yeah. Yeah, okay. because then Vanna goes back the to turning, turn the, turning the letters. They no turning letters. She used to have to physically turn letters. Now all she does is point to them. And they oh, light really? Up. I didn't and, know that. And they, they light up. It. Yeah. <laughs> it was not, I like to see the letters turn. Before, you know? <laughs> actually, before she, she turned them, as you remember, she used to turn them, and the letter would come up. Then when they got went electronic, she goes over and touches them. So they, okay. <laughs> yeah. Just so they have a pretty lady walking across the stage. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. Yes. yeah. And Vanna was, a, it was a, an established thing. I mean, years ago, when I was doing uh, the morning show in San Francisco, and that's got to be, it's in the 80s, okay, they were guests on my show together. That's how back they far back they go with that show. Who was together? Uh, Pat, just say Jack and Vanna White came on oh, the show. wasn't she there from the beginning? I thought you don't know so. what I'm saying is, this was back in the 80s. That's how far back they go on that show. You know? Hey, I just noticed something. I don't know if it's been here before. Mm -hmm. There's a little note in the upper left corner of my screen. i got to lean in. It says, Alex is using a device that could re record or broadcast this call. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that me that puts it there or you? No, that's them. Who's them? Them is uh, Skypey people. Oh, okay. The Skypey people. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's supposed to let you know I'm recording you. Yes, I knew that up front. Okay. Oh, I use a thing called NDI, and whenever that gets used, they they put that up there. He may be recording you right now. I see. So how's the, how have you been for two weeks since we spoke? Well, I'm uh, I'm fine. I uh, I uh, did I did I tell you I had my uh, the spacer put in in the. Uh, no, I guess maybe I didn't. I had this little you operation out to. where they put in a spacer and they yeah they put me out for fifteen minutes and. Uh, they put some gold posts in my prostate, so now I'm worth, a, at least I'm worth more than the 98 cents they say your bodily parts get you. <laughs> um, 
And uh, that's oh, for that's oh, wow. <laughs> that's for aiming in for the uh, radiation. Plus, just, just prepping for the real thing. Yeah. Uh, so then I did that, uh, and um, that was that was that went easy enough, except the the, the the stuff they put in my system to put me to sleep. He said, "Well, it'll be get a little a little hot." Little hot. My uh -huh. hand felt like it was falling off, but I passed out finally. I think that's you, not no, how hot no, no, it was. no, no. It was, it was, and uh, uh, then I, I, he said, "Oh well, I'll put some numbing agent in there." Oh, well, you, now you think of it, and then uh, I went. To, uh, he said the last words I said was, "Oh, that's nice," you know, and then I was out. Okay, and they did the whole thing, and then two days later, I go in for a rehearsal for my. Uh, for my radiation, in which they, they rehearse it. Well, they do all the things they got to do. They put and take a CT scan of me to see where the prostate, how big it is, where they want to put the radiation, and so my doctor was there for this. Um, and uh, then they do something, and, and I'm now a courant, more than okay. I've ever been. Okay. Yeah, I I now have four tattoos. Oh, real? I mean, forever? They put the, it. They put. It, they put a tattoo on my be uh, upper upper belly here, lower belly. I want to know where these and tattoos are. Side. Do you really want to tell me? Well, no, no. They're on either side too. They're just little dots. <laughs> little dots. That's yeah. where they're going to stick something in. No, that's where they're going to. Again, they use those as guideposts for the radiation. Okay. Yeah. They. I was because I was thinking that when they were doing something inside me, they were going in through. On one through one side. Yeah. But they didn't tattoo me. They just they just went it. in. They were yeah. Doing it. Yeah. No. No. This is so that they can. It's how they position the uh, the robot arm to go and and zap me. Okay. Ain't medicine wonderful? It's. I'll tell you something. I'm look, I'm kind of looking forward to that. That's kind of sci-fi. I'm not looking as for, much forward to the seeds that he's going to implant in me about two weeks and after they that. Do that. They do that by sticking a needle in your perineum and actually going in there and depositing. Did they put you to sleep first? Oh, yeah, of course. I would. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's, I hope that, so. that, that's the only bonus you get out of this whole thing. And they, <laughs> uh, they uh, are going to, um, you know. Uh, um, uh, so wait, wait, wait. What are the three parts of this? No, the two. Well, well the first part was a prep for the whole thing. For That's the what you just explained. For the radiation. That was the space, the, gold things in. the spacer and the gold thing. Okay, the okay. spacer is to separate your rectum from your prostate so that it doesn't get irradiated. Okay. okay. All right. Then okay. next is the uh, actual radiation, which is coming up on the 27th. That's that, what the tattoos are for. Yeah, that's five visits every other day for a week and a half. Okay. Okay, which is fine. You know, old days you used to have to go for two months. Five days a week, right? Okay. And then after that, he does the uh, seed implant, which is taking a, while I'm asleep, a needle, th put, shoving it through the perineum, and then depositing these um, uh, seeds in my prostate. And uh, You know, I'm so squeamish when you say things like, oh, just stick a needle in like that. Go, ah! Is I could never be a surgeon. <laughs> I just I know, but I'm not going to have to be awake for all of this, so it doesn't matter. Stick anything you want. I don't even like hearing about. And it. And I'm told it doesn't. You don't have any pain afterwards. So it, it's, it's not about that. Yeah, it's yeah. just you're going to do what to me? And and it's it's a uh, outpatient procedure. You're, you're, it doesn't you're, matter. It you're still in and out in a couple the same hours. Way. <laughs> yeah, and then I'm through with all my radiation and stuff. And then, as I've joked many, many times on this program, and they're probably <clears> sick of hearing the joke. I will then every time I fart, a mushroom cloud will come out of my ass. So, oh God, you always go in that direction. Yeah, I always have to take it into the dumper, you know. And how are you, my fine lady? I'm okay. Yeah, you I'm look, okay. You look great. I would like to do a shout out. Yeah. To the pulmonary rehab that I go to twice a week. Oh yeah, this is your other problem. See, she's the cancer isn't the bad problem. It turns out, it's. Uh... What I say about the cancer now is that if I didn't know I had cancer, I wouldn't know I have cancer. Yeah. And uh, the the bigger problem day to day in terms of yeah. you have to deal with it is COPD because the big deal is you can't breathe. Right. And uh, so this rehab is what they do there, <clears throat> excuse me, is teach you some new breathing techniques and you do a lot of work on treadmill. 
-hmm. And when I first got there, I could only do five or 10 minutes on the treadmill. Mm -hmm. When I was there yesterday, I did 40 minutes, 45 wow. minutes, something wow. like that. Now, we're not talking at much of an incline. It's, more, it's flat. Right, but still. And I'm not going all that fast, and I never will walk very fast anymore. But uh, it's in two months, that's a huge improvement. Then once a week, we have, oh, we, and we do sitting down. I use, I have to confess something that I'm ashamed of now, mm -hmm. is that ever in the past, whenever I saw a bunch of old people sitting in chairs doing arm exercises mm -hmm. and stuff, yeah. I thought, why bother? How much can you get done in a chair? Well, let me tell you, they can really make my muscles hurt. <laughs> and it's, it's, I, I should never, ever have said anything like that because it's really hard work. And um, and it gets, you know, during my progress there, it gets harder and harder. Mm -hmm. And uh, and the difference, it used to be that I couldn't walk from home to the trash or to the mailbox mm -hmm. without having to stop two times, sometimes three to catch my breath. Mm -hmm. Now I can get there and back without doing that, thanks to the rehab. Wow. And we have education classes that teach you these breathing techniques and when to use your rescue inhaler, you know, that sometimes when you you can't get your breath. Yeah. And nutrition and just an endless number of stuff, little things that make your life easier, make your breathing easier when you have this disease. Marjorie, turns out, came up with COPD. A slight, not when? not bad. When? Uh, recently. Recently. Uh -huh. And she went to a pulmonologist. And he said, yeah, you have COPD. You have a minor, she kind of has a minor version of it she gets out of breath and so on but they say you know you've got copd but uh, and i can't remember what they said may have caused it it was something she did years and years and years and years and years ago you know if you smoked that you know yeah, yeah. You i'm not uh, concerned about causes i mean you could it seems to me if you live in australia you're now in danger of it yeah. um yes yes uh but uh but what I'm impressed with is these nurses, they are our ends that, um, you know, keep track of what we're doing and and keep all the notes and tell you when to, no, you can do another 10 minutes today, you know, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. And they're right and they're smart and they can explain everything in words that non-medical people can understand. Mm -hmm. And I'm just, it's changed my life in two months. It doesn't do anything for the pains in my hands, but. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Um, that wasn't on the menu to begin with. So um, I just I think they're terrific and they've done wonderful things for me and made my life so much better. Wow. Um, and I forgot what the question was that you asked about that. But yeah. there you go. But but uh, anyway, so she she has it. Uh, but uh, uh, he's going to see her in about three months and maybe give her some inhalers or things like that. that she... I do that every morning yeah. and evening. But it's not like you have it. You know, uh, well, well, and that's another difference. After going to this for two months in the beginning, I could only do these little intakes of breath for the inhalers, mm -hmm. and now I can do great big ones. So well, they've know, made a know, big difference in my life. What they think might have caused it is, a while back when we were living on Houston Street, the building next door to us completely caught on fire. I mean, it was a five-alarm fire, fire trucks everywhere. And we stood on the roof watching it right across from it. And it could have been, they feel, from inhaling those fumes. You know? I don't know if you could one time does that for anything, but it, there you go. She was coughing for months after that. Yeah. It was, it was cool. Why were you up there in the middle of the smoke? Because it was fascinating watching the firemen work. But everybody knows it's not good to be breathing in all that smoke. It's also fun watching another house burn down and having it not be yours. Alex, yeah. sometimes, <laughs> Well, it's like my father said about boxing. My father was, you remember my father, he was a very I, kind, gentle man, okay? He was yes. a gentle person. But he loved watching boxing. And I, one time I asked him, I said, Dad, you're such a nice person and you're so, you know, you're so decent and, and so nonviolent. Why do you like watching boxing? And he says, I like to watch two guys beat the crap out of each other in a ring and be happy I'm neither of them. 
<laughs> that works for me once. You know? <laughs> Not for the once. Lost the entertainment value after that. Yeah. <laughs> so you said you had something for show and tell? I have something for show and tell. Here we go, ladies. You know, I love show and tell because it's, it's always, it's always a have, present we, for all of us. What? Go ahead. As we know, I have many hats. Yeah. And this is a new hat yeah. that um, I saw a climate scientist wearing. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I'm going to put it on for you. Make America cool again. Is this the coolest hat? Yes. It's blue. Yeah. And it says, make America, America cool, cool again. again. That's It's great. a fun. That's terrific. Isn't it terrific? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I love it. I love it. Anything to put down Donald Trump, you know. <laughs> I don't know. There are certain places I won't wear it. Really? Why? I don't want the argument. I don't know that you'd have an argument with that. You know, it's uh, people. If anything, if you wear it, they probably they probably I, chuckle I'm at you. I have Trumper, and I don't want. I just am not interested in having that conversation. Come on, you live in Oregon. That's not Trump country. Excuse me. Really? You go east of the Cascades. Yeah. And are that, you planning on going yeah. east of the Cascades? Pardon me? Are you planning on going east of the Cascades? But, you know, I'd, I'd just rather not discuss this. Wear story. your damn hat and <laughs> wear it proudly. Oh. But, and I never, I don't really like how I look in this kind of a hat, but it's worth it for what yeah. it says on it. I love what it <laughs> says on it. <laughs> Well, I uh, I was going to make one that uh, if, with a picture of a block of cheese on it and go make America great again. Ah, uh, great, uh, yeah, great yeah, the cheese, yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. No, I like this. Make America cool again. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see as many people wearing this hat as wear the red hat. So what's happening? Let's just ask you quickly, since you have a blog called TimeGoesBy.net, which everybody should read because it's great that deals with aging. What's happening with all the cacas lately? Um, well, that's interesting. Uh, you know, there's been a, a lot of below the radar because of everything else that's going on. A lot of below the radar news chit chat mm -hmm. that Trump is out to get social security in one way or another. Mm -hmm. uh, most likely that means the people who use social security for disability, which is not necessarily related to being old. Right. You know, um, and people forget that Social Security does that too. And that's often people who can't work. And one of the ways they think he's going to go after it is make them reapply every two years, mm -hmm. which is a long, involved, awful process that gets hung up forever. Mm hmm and doesn't seem to me a reasonable thing to do. Um, Does this guy get up every morning and say, what can I do that's cruel? I think so. <laughs> I mean, really. Is there any other explanation? Yeah, I mean, you know, you lay, wait a minute, let's take health care away from old people. And by the way, what can we do to children? You know? Yes, yes. And the children thing really breaks your heart, the, the border children. It's just so oh, awful. They, 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 and some of those families, because they didn't keep records of where they shipped off the children around the United States, mm -hmm. some of those families will never be reunited ever. Right. Right. And now they are finding new ways to turn away asylum seekers and refugees that's not people that just think, oh, I could make a better living in America, which, you know, I disapprove of what he's doing with that, too. But but this is if you're you're escaping a country where everybody's shooting each other all the time mm -hmm. or there's no more food and it's going to get worse with climate change. There are going to be more climate refugees. And so the northern hemisphere is going to be getting a lot of those. And here we are, instead of talking about how to help these people and get them here and take care of of them and get them on their feet again, we're talking about not allowing them in, even to apply for asylum or refugee status. Mm. Mm. Um, I don't even know how to think about that without getting teary. I know, I know. Well, um, anyway. And uh, 
So for old people, you know, the other things that are being bandied about are raising the age for eligibility for Social Security past 67. It has 20 years ago they or so, they raised it from 65 to 67, but very slowly over many years. And it's not even reached entirely 67 yet, and already mm -hmm. they're talking about more. And I don't know the statistics well enough to think about that rationally. Yeah. Not, uh, rationally, I can't, but I, I can't make a decision about it because I don't know what the statistics are. They say that people um, are healthier longer and don't need it, but and, and that there's full and un, full and Un, you know what I mean, the reverse of that, full employment. Well, not for old people. <laughs> After 50 and sometimes even 40, you don't get hired. No, that's, that's right. It's absolutely right. We should be starting, uh, pardon me, folks, for saying this, we should start giving Social Security at 50. We really should. I well, mean, I don't think that's necessary. Well, I mean, come on. How, is it, how does a person, unless he's very lucky, earn a living after 55? I was very lucky. I kept working till I was 74, okay? That, that's, that's pushing it. That's getting pretty lucky. 63 for me, and I, could, I, I beat my head against a wall for a year and couldn't. You, you know, I was working then in, in, in the Internet. Right. And... Um, I didn't want it to be about ageism, but I realized that the very, very few two or three interviews that I got in person, I usually, I could get a phone interview, but not in person, they were all 20-somethings. You had a very impressive, what they call CV, you know, you had a very impressive resume of working with Some Barbara Walters. Lots of people that can't get hired yeah, at that right. age. But what I'm saying is, it was your age, it wasn't, it wasn't your skill set. Well, you know, here's the one that got me that I knew it was over, forget it, figure out how to mm -hmm. live without a regular income. Yeah. Is I was, had, had a successful phone interview. They asked me to come in. This was at four or five in the afternoon. They asked me if I could come in to meet some more people the next morning at 10 a.m. And so I, you know, I got myself all shiny and neat and clean. And I went up there and I'm waiting in the waiting room. And at one point, a door opens, and a head of a 20-something looks out and looks right at me and closes the door. And I wait for another 10 or 15 or 20 minutes. <clears throat> then the guy who had stuck his head through the door came out and came over to me, and he said, I must apologize to you. I am so sorry. We filled the job after we talked to you yesterday. He talked to me at 5 o'clock. I don't believe he filled the job. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it seems to me if you're going to die, going to, going to lie, that you should at least make it reasonable. <laughs> you know? um, and that's when I knew that it was, I couldn't work that hard. I, I could work really hard at a job, but I couldn't work hard at that anymore. Yeah, getting one. Yeah. Yeah. I, wow. I was worn yeah. out. As, yeah. it, it was just exhausting. No, well, I was talking and, to somebody today about the fact that I think my last job, I was let go. There was, there was the age factor. I always felt that. And the thing that always galled me, and I told, uh, this was, I was talking to Larry Bubbles Brown, um, a comedian who I do one of these interviews with on occasion. Um, I, I said to him that when I was being let go, they said, uh, by the way, you know, you have severance. You have 16 weeks of severance, big deal. Company like series, 16 weeks of severance. Hmm. Anyway, um, uh, but before you can get your severance, you have to sign this uh, agreement that you won't sue us for age discrimination. This is a very important point that you're making. Yeah. Um, and, and let me explain well, a little bit. Can first. I just finish the story for a second? Right, I, and I, then I, I said, no, 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 <laughs> no. then I funny. said to them, well, you realize that asking me to do this is age discrimination because they weren't asking it of my producer who was younger than I was, mm -hmm. you know. Anyway, as you were saying. Um, I forgot, you know, I get it's just. You were saying something I should have said or something. Oh, that, no, yeah. no, no. It was about, um, oh, I'm sorry. This, I, is, I, this is what happens to two I old people. what I'm saying ever. I never find it again. And so. Yeah. Yeah. I lost but, it. But but you un you understand what they were putting me through there. It was obviously age oh, discrimination. 
Yeah, what? Is that there are laws against age discrimination as there are against other kinds of discrimination. Mm -hmm. However, and this is not delay on Trump. I mean, I, I don't know what this administration has done, but other administrations before him, they keep easing the laws for the employers so that it gets harder right. and harder right. for employee, employees who've been let go to go to court if they think they have a case. And it and it's, they just watered down the bill so that there's hardly anything. And the, and the obvious thing is, particularly a company as big as what you work for, anything more than a small little family company or something, um, is they have lawyers on staff full time. So it doesn't matter how what they've got to do in terms of legal things. They're already paying a guy to do it. Whereas you or I have to go out and pay somebody eight or nine hundred or a thousand, whatever, a minute mm -hmm. or an hour. It seems yeah. like a minute, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, to to handle your case. So most people can't afford to do that. They're already out of work, for God's sake. Yeah. Um, and so it just gets harder and harder. And it's so what it does is make age discrimination effectively legal. Yeah. Yeah. And very, very few cases are ever won by individuals. Hey, listen. And, oh, if you're going to raise, yeah. you know, if you're going to raise the retirement age, you're going to have to think about that part of it. Yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, and how and how do we make that different? Yeah. Well, it'd be nice if they raise the 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 the. Uh, retirement age it, because people were getting hired later in life but that's not the case you actually need the money earlier but hey look i you know we i always say oh we're going to do 25 minutes and then all of a sudden i look at the clock and we've done 31 minutes <laughs> my <laughs> time flies when you're having fun you Espe that word chatterbox especially <laughs> when you're two old people talking about old stuff you know yeah yeah, yeah. hey listen it's nice to age with you you know? <laughs> Thank you, and you. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I one day came to the realization that uh, you know the only reason I have what I have physically is because the most contributing factor is I'm 80 years old. That's also the good news. So you know you can't. Here's the thing I go through sometimes when I have a new symptom or something yeah. is going wrong that doesn't feel right. Is it cancer? Is it COPD or is it old age? I don't know. Or, surprise, <laughs> surprise, is it something new? <laughs> oh, you <can't> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's Ronnie Bennett. She has a thing, a, a blog called timegoesby.net. you got to go to it. It's really terrific, and I love talking to you. I enjoy this, too. Ladies and gentlemen, Ronnie Bennett.